I was just talking to somebody and what I was talking to her about was 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 just a it was just good. And sometimes when I'm doing those videos for people like when I'm doing talking to people about certain things it's it be so powerful. Like it it be so powerful, you know? And I just thank God for his revelation, but I want to talk about breaking free. Um let me let me let me let me uh google this word real quick. And um, let me see. Fifty-eight, fifty-eight. Let me. I'm gonna Google this word real quick so I can read it to you. Um, <sighs> and then it's. I want to go to verse six. And I'm not trying to be on here long. I really ain't. But it says, is this not the kind of fasting I have chosen? And this is why God chose fasting. This is the purpose for fasting. Um, to loose the chains of injustice, to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free, and that you break every yoke. So I, I often think about how God had me fasting all them years like that. You know, I was so, I had so much bondage you know all that bondage insecurity uh uh you know all this mess you know the just uh, uh, uh um not thinking i'm good enough you know i had a cycle of failure i had a cycle of not finishing what i start you know i had a cycle of um jealousy i had a cycle of um of um you know all just all kind of different demons, strongholds and familiar spirits, you know, the familiar spirits were powerful. Let me tell you what the familiar spirit is. Okay. Uh, just, just imagine you was going with, with, with somebody, this guy and y'all broke up. And so every time you drive by a certain place, you think about him or think about, you know, you, or you, you, you hear a certain song and next, you know, you think about him or, you know, different things like that. Familiar spirit is, is a spirit that reminds you of something of your past, a familiar spirit. So I used to have that spirit real bad and I didn't know what that was. And I remember my pastor said this was years ago. He was saying a familiar spirit, even though he was telling me I had a familiar spirit, I still didn't know what that was. I still didn't know what a familiar, I didn't know, but I'm telling you what it is. A familiar spirit is a spirit that reminds you of your past, you know, reminds you of something that already happened, reminds you of old relationships. You know, you dream, if you go to sleep and dream of uh, being in a bed with somebody or being around your past and, you know, a past relationship and different things like that, listen to these old songs that you was listening to during the time, like Anita Baker, if you was in a relationship when Anita Baker, when, you know, like in the eighties or nineties or whatever your situation is. Is. Like right now, you know, you could have broke up with somebody and, and then you listen to, listen to Jasmine Sullivan, uh, 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 whatever, you know, pick up your whatever. I don't know. And then then when that song come back on, you think about that situation. Somebody broke your heart. You think about that situation. So something reminds you of the past. Something reminds you of a certain situation. That's a familiar spirit. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. Most of the stuff you're dealing with in your life is a spirit. Delay. It could be a delay spirit. You know, anger. It could be. It, it, it could be a, de, a anger, angry spirit. It's a difference with being angry, you know, or having an angry spirit. Some people got a spirit of wrath. You know, they get so they get so angry it turns into you know where they can punch holes in the wall, walls or do damage or see the, a lot of stuff people dealing with is spirits and they don't know it. They just think, okay, that's this. Or they say that's a mental condition or that's just a bad habit or she just got a bad attitude. No, most people dealing with spirits and they don't even recognize it. How are you going to cast out a spirit that you don't even know a spirit and poverty? That's, that's a spirit. That attaches itself to your lineage that attaches itself to your life. So if spirit of infirmity, spirit of infirmity, that's a spirit. That's a spirit of sickness. That's a spirit. So let me tell you something like just say like if you if you if you want to get delivered from these things, you know, you can't just fast until you until you get a breakthrough. 
You don't just set yourself out there and just say, okay, I'm just going to fast to something break. You Because guess what? You can fast, start fasting, but you, because let me tell you about God. God had Moses fast for 40 days and 40 nights. God had Jesus fast 40 days and 40 nights. Yes, Ezra in chapter 8, he called for a fast at the river of Ahava that they might humble themselves before God to see God for the right, right way for them and their little ones and protection. Then you got Nineveh when God was sending uh, Jonah to tell them that he was going to destroy them. They called a fast and they just fasted. I'm quite sure it wasn't that many days. It could have been a three-day fast or whatever because it took Jonah three days to get there. And they had, and when Jen, well, 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 when no, um, wait a minute. It took Jonah three days to get there. But when Jonah got there, he he gave him the word of God and they went on the fast. So we really don't even know how long that fast was. But it probably wasn't that long. It wasn't that long. Then you got the Jehoshaphat and them. And, and, and I'm, I'm looking at this thing because I'm watching. the. Um, I'm just watching outside. Um. So you got you got Jehoshaphat and them. Jehoshaphat and them, they they prayed. There wasn't no two and three day pray fast. They just prayed that day and God came through. So it's some fast that you only let me tell you something. If you if you if you got witchcraft witchcraft attacks going on, depending on how severe they are, depending on if God told you to fast uh, and you didn't obey Him, that that's what determines the 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 how 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 extended the fast is. But if you got witchcraft and stuff going on, then God would that you can do a twenty four hour water fast. You can do a, a quick simple fast. You can even fast a quick fast to keep people from danger. Esther them did a three day no food and no water, and that saved all them Jews from getting. And annihilated. Then you got, um, you know, Paul, he did a little three day fast. So you can do a simple fast three days. But when it comes to breaking chains and breaking yokes off your life, depending on how many chains and yokes you got to break, it's going to take more than one fast. And it's going to take more than one 24 hours. And it's going to take more than one three day. And it's going to take more than one seven day. And it's going to take more than one 21 day. I mean, one 20, uh, one 21 day fast. It's going to take more than one 40 day fast. It's something with depending on how many yokes you got on you, how many chains need to be broken off on you, how many demons you deal with. It's going to take more than one fast. That's why when God tell you to fast, you need to do that fast. And when God tell you to fast, he going to tell you how long to fast. You don't got to guess with God. If he tell you to fast, he might speak in your spirit 21 days, three days, or he might start showing you 40, 21, 3, 30. He, God is not going to leave you confused. When you second guess God is when you get confused. And then when you got people in your ear always running their mouth in your ear, you get confused. When you listen to 50,000 different preachers, that's when you get confused. Because everybody got their own perspective. We don't want to hear everybody's perspective. We want to hear the Lord's perspective. I don't want to hear no preacher that giving me his perspective. I need to hear from God. Not, not, not no man. Not no flesh. You, uh, you see what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is I need to hear a preacher that I need to hear from God through that preacher is what I'm saying. So a lot of this confusion is coming because you all over the place. All over the place. So if you want to get set free, baby, you it, it's going to take some obedience. It's going to take some obedience. Some of y'all in relationships and you don't know how to break free from their relationship. This person that moved on with their life. They with somebody else and now you just... They're pitiful over them. You got to you got to go to God. You got to repent for being in a relationship. And you got to see what fast God wants you to do. And then you're going to have to block that person. You're going to have to shut that relationship down. If that person reach out to you, ask you for something, want to talk to you, checking on you, you got to stop reaching out to that person. Ask Sam, I'm just checking on you, seeing if you okay. I did want to know if you all right. Yes, they all right. They doing just fine without you. Yeah, baby, they're taking on you. Do okay. Do need anything? You you want anything? Well, then let me know. I remember when in 1990, probably 90, it had to be 1997 because I was pregnant with my daughter. Me and Greg's daughter. So I was pregnant with this daughter that's 26 now. She, this daughter's 27. Daughter, how old are you? She one of them. 
And so me and Greg had broke up because I, I was mean. I wasn't just mean because I was pregnant. I was just mean. I threw him out because I was working at the post office. And he loved to hang out with them friends. So he uh, he had got, he had, uh, uh, I think he had worked in a temporary service. They let him go see so when he got his unemployment. So he had went and hang out with his friends and he had spent it out of his mama house. So when we was talking on the phone, he told me he had spent out of his mama house. I said, you spent off your, your, spent out of your mama house. Baby, I went home, my pregnant self, and got every bit of his stuff, this big old trunk and everything, loaded it up and carried it right to his mama house. And I was and I was gone. But I was mad because he had been out with, hanging out with his friends. That's what I was mad about. Well, that boy was done with me. Absolutely done with me. I would call him, fussing at him. And then I told him one day, I said, I said, that's why I'm changing my number. He said, I don't know why. I don't call you. And he was right. That boy never called me. He didn't even check on me while I was pregnant. He didn't care. We had this apartment together, all these bills. He just left. I mean, when I put him out, he didn't want to come back to me. He didn't want me no more. And guess what? That's that, that guess what that did? That put me on my knees. I started praying to this Jesus that I was raised up to pray to. Because my heart was broke. I put this man out and he didn't want to come back. I was devastated. Pregnant. I already had my oldest daughter. She was three by this time. And then I was pregnant with my baby by this man that didn't want me. And I was pitiful and pathetic. But when I tell you those prayers, God stepped in and paid every bill. I, he blessed me with more than I ever had at, during that time. I had a little job. He gave me a job. And uh, uh, and then he just... And then I, you know, he just was blessing me. I ain't my, and all that time Greg was gone. Greg was gone for about five months. Because when Greg left, I wasn't even showing. When Greg came back, I was about eight months pregnant. And God took care of me. He sure did. And I started praying to God. And three, three years later, I got saved. Nope, not three years later, the next year, because my baby was born in 97, and that was in 97. And I and I got saved in January 1998, so that was a couple of months later. The, me getting on my knees, praying, just asking God to help me and strengthen me because I was so weak and miserable. Nobody didn't know because I, I put up this pretense. And uh, I was just, I was so lonely and broken over that man. I'm talking about Greg. And so God brought Greg back to me. And every check that Greg saved, I used to think that man ain't helped me pay these bills. He out there kicking with his friends. Every check that that boy left that house with, he got an unemployment check, which probably was a hundred and something a week. That's what I was waiting on that son to come home. <laughs> I be I be stalking. I, I they said that boy said you stalking. I be stalking. So I was looking at that thing to see where he drive up. I just want my kids home. I just want my kids home. They go do what they got to do, go to school or whatever. I just be looking for them to come to come home. And so anyway, um, so when he came back home, he brought every check. that he, he didn't spend none of that money. And not only did he not spend that money, he had got his income tax. He came back home with, with almost $10,000. Well, um, well, not that no nope. he, he came home he bought me this big old thick chain with a cross on it real ch gold he bought me chanel number five perfume he just bought me all this stuff and then he bought me all the rest of the money and that money probably was about six or seven thousand dollars he had been saving and he had got his income tax he brought it all home to me god changed everything <laughs> god must hear my prayers baby because god brought him back to me that boy didn't want to be with me he did not want me. His sister had called me one day and said, come on. She wanted me to come and take her to the mall. So I went over to the house. And so uh, when I brought her back from the mall, um, we were sitting at the table. And Greg was there. He came out the room. And then he, uh, when he came out the room, he wound up walking me to the front door. And while we were standing at the front door, he just kissed me. And then he was, and then right after that, he he was back at home like that same, that weekend. He came back home, and then um, I still wasn't saved yet. I told God, you know, I want to get saved. I don't know what I was telling God, but a year later, 
not even a year, a couple of months later, I was asked to go to this church January 18th, 1998. And I went, I got saved. And that's when we got married. But you, you know, I never forget when he said that to me. He said, I don't know why you changed your number. I don't call you anyway. And that's what we're doing. We're running behind people, even if it's subliminally. You could be running behind somebody, but ain't even moving. You might not call them. You might not reach out to them, but you still running behind them. But they don't know you running behind them because it's all emotionally. Like your emotions could be all over the place because you literally running behind this person that don't want you. And then you on their Facebook page, Instagram page, stalking every move that they make. You know, you got to let go, but it ain't when you got a stronghold or a, a familiar spirit or soul tie, you got to fast out of that as God leads you. And you got to get the word of God in you. And re- first of all, if you ain't saved, you got to get saved. Yeah, because they said it's supposed to be a thunderstorm or some coming. So hurry up and do that so they can get up, you know, before they stop ordering. Yeah. So you got to get saved. You got to surrender to God. You got to stop playing. Don't surrender to God just because you need him to fix your situation. Oh, Lord, I'm, I want to get saved. I want to do right because you're, cause you, cause you're in poverty or you're, you're, you lost your job or you ain't got no money. So now you want to call on God. God already know you're trying to, you just trying to use him. But one thing, the good news is whatever brings you to that place, it's good, all good. Because me being broken hearted over Greg, when, when, when we had broke up like that, it drove me to Jesus. So whatever makes you call on the name of the Lord is fine with me. But anyway, you know, um, fasting is what God designed to break you free from these chains and these demonic strongholds and all these different things that's holding you down and keeping you from from being the best you can be. You know when you're in bondage. You know when you you stuck. You know when something just ain't right. You know when you're confusing, and you, but you know it shouldn't be this way. You know when you in love with somebody that ain't in love with you. You know that when you lusting after somebody, you know. Then listen here, I'm telling you another thing too. If you're talking to somebody that's married and they say, well, we're we on, we on the verge of divorce. We, we, we ain't together. We separated. And you talking to that person, that's adultery. If somebody married, I don't care if they separated, what their situation is, you don't be talking to them. That's adultery. Leave them alone. Because these are the doors that we open to bring the devil into our home. And and and, and some of some some people have that Samson that Samson spirit, that spirit that got to have somebody. Samson had to have somebody. He was powerful and strong and chosen by God, but he had a weakness. And that's the that's when fasting kicks in too, because you got to get rid of that weakness. If you got this calling on your life and you chosen by God and you anointed, you you and you think you ain't got no weakness, ask David. You just ain't ran into the right weakness yet. That's why you got to fast and pray so you can get strengthened, especially when you know the weakness. If you have a weakness that you don't like to be alone, you, you don't want to be by yourself. You tell God, I'm so tired of being by myself. Man, you better start fasting and praying till that spirit is off of you. Because most people, in they're in and out of relationships because they don't know how to be alone. Constantly in a relationship with somebody. Every time I turn around, in a relationship, in a relationship, in a relationship, in a different relationship. That's a that's you need to break free. You need to be set free. Some people in cycle of poverty and bondage. Like every time they get their check, it's gone before they they can't even hardly pay their bills. It's gone. You know, I mean, these different cycles can because these cycles can reign and rule in your life in different areas and in multiple areas. That's why he said you need to fast to be set to be to set the captives free, to break these yokes off of you, to break this bondage off of you. We can have so many, so much bondage on us and don't even know what we how many spirits we're dealing with. We we don't know unless the Lord reveal it to you. 
But if you know you keep storing stuff, stopping, storing, stopping, that's a that's a cycle that needs to be broken. Then some of us already know anybody can know when they lazy, but some people got a job, but they don't realize that they still lazy. Some people procrastinate, do it tomorrow, I do it tomorrow. When you gonna start your weight loss? Tomorrow. I'm gonna do girl, I'm, girl, I'm just gonna eat everything right now. I'm gonna go, then leave me alone. I'm gonna eat these shrimp. I'm gonna eat this, 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 I'm gonna eat that, I'm gonna eat that steak. And then I'm going to start tomorrow. Girl, I'm going to start tomorrow. I'm going to lose this weight. And when tomorrow comes, girl, just give me them shrimp. Just give me them shrimp and them potato chips. And tomorrow I'm going to start this bath. I'm going to do it powerfully. I'm going to pass it to the Lord. And then tomorrow come. Procrastination. And then, then oh my goodness, please. Please don't let me deal with the sloth. That sloth will have you walking like this. I mean, that sloth, that spirit of sloth, baby, these are spirits. These are spirits. This stuff is real. So, I just wanted to come on here and say, most of this stuff you're dealing with, these are spirits and you got to fast, you got to pray, you got to fast and pray to get out of these demons, to get away from these demons. I used to pray, pray, pray to be set free from everything. I remember I was in lust with my brother at the church like that. Then we went to another church. And by this time, you know, I had been fasting and praying and you know, I've been fasting for a couple of, for some years now, about three years. So now when we switched to, when we left our church and came out here, we, we wound up going to the same church together too, our families. And I tell you, I was tired. I said, Lord, I, please remove him from this church because I was tired of that lust. It was just, it was just within me. I never acted on it or nothing, but, but God see everything. God knows your heart. So the Lord said, I will not remove that tree. You just better not touch it. And then so God made me get delivered right with him right there. And once I got delivered, then God moved it on out the way. Sometimes you got to leave a certain situation to, to, in order to get away. Sometimes God will make you sit right there until that mess is out of you. But, but clearly fasting is the key. You know, you can, some things you pray, pray, pray. Even Jesus said it. The disciples asked, why couldn't they cast out that demon? Jesus said, he's kind of come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Some things you got to put that fasting with it. Just like that lemon, you need some water. You can add some sugar. You can, you can add some sugar. But you're going to need some water. Same thing with fasting. And with prayer, you need some, some things you need some fasting with that prayer, y'all. So with that being said, if you know you got some 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 reoccurring demonic activity or reoccurring situations, or you can't break free from somebody, you know, you could have a sexual addiction, you could have a, a masturbation spirit. That masturbation can make your body sick. I'm telling you, you you know, you could have a whatever spirit you got, a a, a gluttony spirit, or you know, anything, whatever it is, you know. Lazy, slothful, uh, angry, uh, you know, uh, uh, narcissist, narcissistic spirit, uh, you know, uh, pride. Oh, my goodness. That pride is disgusting. You know, arrogance, you know, just whatever the situation might be. You know, you got this. Some of these ain't coming out about nothing but prayer and fasting. What is it? Mark 929. Oh, man. Is it Mark 9, 29? No, it's in Matthew and Mark. <sighs> Let me see. So Isaiah 58, read that. Isaiah 58 and 6 on down to verse 14. And then you got what? Mark 9, 29. Let me see. Mark 9, 29. And it says, And he said to them, This kind cannot 
be driven out by anything but prayer. That's the NIV Bible. The NIV Bible don't give you everything like the other Bibles do. So you got to be careful with the NIV Bible. So he said unto them, this kind come out, can come out nothing about but prayer and fasting. And that's Mark 9, 29, New King James Version. You some things, baby, to get your children free, to get that poverty spirit off of you, to get that lazy spirit off of you, to get that bad cycle off of you to get the cycle of cycle of failure off of you when you know that you should be having your own business but you're so uncomfortable going to this job because that's all you got right now when you know that god is calling you higher in him and you can't go certain things ain't this it, it, you got to fast your way through this you got to fast and pray you just got to fast and pray Yeah. I turned that light on in there. If somebody in that kitchen, if that was that light off in there, Greg. Um. Yeah, I just turned them lights on on the porch and in that living room. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. Some things ain't gonna come out except for fasting and prayer, baby. Mm-hmm. And and guess what? It's going to some of it going to take more than just one fast, like I already said. So if you need to be delivered, listen, fast and pray. Get that word of God in you, because that word of God is what you need to keep them demons out of you. Remember what I got, what I said about Jesus. She said, he said, she, he said, uh, he said, uh, them devils leave. They go into walking around in dry places and then they come back to you. They see you swept and clean and they go back and get seven more. And now you worse than what you was before. And that lady said, oh, blessed is your mother who, 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 you know, who nursed you, who nursed you at her breast. And Jesus said, no, blessed is those who hear the word and keep it. You got to get that word in you and you got to keep it in you and you got to do it. So, yeah, that's what time it is. So I just wanted to come on here and say that, you know, get out of that mess. Get out of that poverty. Get out of that living from check to check. Get out of the dip. If God is calling you to go to another level in him, get up and go. But see, a lot of people don't go because they lazy. They don't want to do what it takes to get to that next level. They don't want to cut off some of them friends. They don't want to cut off some of them relationships. They don't want to stop sleeping and fornicating. They don't want to stop cussing and lying and drinking and smoking weed. They, and some people don't do none of that. But they just don't want to, they just don't, don't want to do what it takes to get to that higher level. But fasting is the key. And I'm not talking about fasting in no sickly way. Some people, they, they fast and it, it becomes a demonic stronghold. You know, they, like they'll be fasting and they, they feel like they can't eat. That's not of God. Even Jesus was hungry. <laughs> After he fast, he was hungry. After your fast, you should be hungry. Not, not. See, so. I'm not talking about no demonic stuff where you letting the devil trick you, make you think it's God telling you to go more, more than what he's telling you to go. And, you, you know, some people, they just, they, they it becomes a, it becomes an eating disorder. That's all. It ain't, it ain't about the fast. It's about a disorder. It's a spirit. It's a, so be careful that that's not you. If you weigh two pounds. And even a baby at two pounds, that's premature. That's premature. That's not a health. That's not a, that's not safe. So, so make sure that you, that your, your, your motives are right. Make sure your heart is pure. Make sure, because see the devil will come and try to, he will come and try to uh, uh, decontaminate everything. You can start off doing it in a pure way and he'll come and try to decontaminate, he'll try to contaminate it. He'll try to infect it. You know, he tried to bring out his trouble. His, you know, different things 
to make so that the word, so you can run from doing the will of God. So he'll come and harass you while you fasting so you can get scared of fasting. Some people scared to fast because every time they fast, bad things happen. So they, they, they relate fasting to bad things happen. You know, some people scared to fast because they know God going to tell them to leave Tony alone and they don't want to leave Tony alone. Yeah, people want to do what they want to do. They don't want to do what God tells them to do, but they want to get out of their mess, but they don't want to obey. Well, disobedience, it, 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 it has consequences. Just like obedience do. It got, you know, obedience got rewards. Disobedience got consequences. So getting in the word of God, staying in his word. Trust in God. Asking God to help you. Listen here, be real with yourself. Don't be fake with you. You might can be fake with other people, which I'm not even good at being fake with people. I want to be delivered. I don't want to be in nobody's bondage. So I tells on myself, Lord, I don't want to be like this, God. I don't want to be doing this. I'm forgive me for my sins. Forgive me, baby. I would when I when I do wrong, I'm going to find that person and I'm apologize. If I can't find that person, I say, Lord, please make that person forgive me, or I go apologize to my husband. I apologize to my kids. I apologize to my sister when I used to make my mom and them upset. I apologize. I'm talking about after I got saved. I go back because my mom's so sorry. My, my mom and dad used to laugh because they give me, they know what time I got to work and they know as soon as they, I got there, I was going to be on that phone, ringing that phone saying, I'm sorry because I don't want to hurt Jesus and I don't want to hurt no people either. I don't want to hurt nobody. I'm sorry if I offend you, you know, if I offend you, not, not if the word offends you. That ain't my business. But if I hurt somebody or disrespected somebody or, you know, rub somebody the wrong way, forgive me because I ain't trying to get in trouble with God. And I'm not I want to leave you better than what than you was when I came. I don't want to take your spirits down and make you feel like now. Now, listen, I can tell you the truth. I can prophesy to you. I can minister to you. I can. The Lord can use me to bring revelation to your situation and it can be a hard pill to swallow. But it's going to be revelation. It's going to open up your eyes. It's going to release. It's going to release that spirit of heaviness. It's going to be. It's going to be hard, but it's going to be right. You're going to feel the deliverance. You're going to feel the weight lift. That's a difference. I want to take your. I want to take your life. I want to take you to a different level than you was before I came. That's the purpose of these videos, giving you revelation, understanding the because because I'm anointed by God to preach and teach the gospel. That's what I am. Then I share my testimonies with you. And my testimonies are more like parables, but they are the truth. And that's what my job is. So you, I shouldn't leave you and you, you, you worse than what you was. And that's what I pray that God help deliver us all. You know, my hand, with my hand going to know what that is like that. And why that's there. But I I still got I still got to tell you what the truth. I still got to tell you, I still got to bring you what you need so you can be set free. I can't worry about what I'm going through. Because I give my problems to the Lord. I still got to do his work. Same thing with us. We can't just give up because things ain't going right in our life. You got to keep doing the will of God. You got to be consistent. Yeah. So I was talking to a friend of mine. I was just talking to her. She was outside of the gym. I met her in 2015. I met her at the gym when I was doing my 40 day liquid fast. I was already little. I was like 158 when I met her and we just clinked. She's so beautiful, so pretty. And that's how we met. I said, oh girl, you're so beautiful. And she is. And that's how me and her met. Did we just throw a bit together every day? <laughs> we would go, she would just go wherever I, we would go walk at the, at the school, the Flow Valley school, meet at the gym together, you know, cause me, I always been by myself. So she loved working out. So we would just, I would mean, it would just, I, it, we would just, you know, and then we'd just talk about God and stuff like that. Cause she, she a Christian too. So she was outside of the gym. Uh, she had some questions for me. So we was just talking before I, before I called y'all back. <laughs> and, she, and so she was saying she was outside the gym. She finna go in the gym. I said, girl, enjoy it. 
I say that's so beautiful when you can go to the gym, you know, because right now, you know, I can I can go in that basement workout, and then I probably can go to the park and walk a little bit. But ain't much, ain't too much I can do right now. I can, I just got to be honest, you know. I'm just trusting God for my health and strength. I thank God He blessed me to do my daily routine and be able to take care of my kids and do what I need to do around the house and take care of my businesses and do those different things. But just literally, sometimes I can. Uh, you know, like if I go to the store to get the, some bananas or they fruit for they smoothies or something or go get something, I get out the car, man, you would think I ran a marathon and I didn't. I just got off the car. So some days be better than others. But I, I just can't. I'm excited to get back to my health and start losing this weight and get my strength back and get my health back. But God promised to heal me. So I'm standing on his promise. But some of these things ain't coming out by nothing but prayer and fasting, baby. God can promise you something, but he still will give you the, the instructions for the prom in order to fulfill the promise. Just like when I got this house, God gave me the house, but I still had to carry out the, 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 the fulfillment of it. I had to do my part. I had to find a loan, you know, how I'm going to get this loan without using my income tax. So I found a, what you call it, the uh, a bank statement loan. If you got, if you're a business owner, that's why I say register your business. Register your business. Don't just sit up there and have this business not registered because you never know when that, 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 that EIN and that bank bank account going to be going to be good for you. God might want to give you a million dollars worth of grants. But if you ain't got no EIN, you ain't got no established business. How are you going to get it to you? You got that idea. Register that business. Well, that just came out. Uh, so anyway, what I'm saying is, you know, God promised to heal me, but but these some of these things ain't gonna come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. When I used to be sick before, my hurt my back like that, and I was obese. I was about 215 pounds. I was too big for myself. I'm five, I'm five four probably five four, but I say I'm five six. Because I feel like I'm tall, but I might not really be tall. I might really be 5'4". You know? Because some people used to tell me I was 5'4 at the doctor's office. I said, oh, I'm 5'6". They said, okay. So they just put down what I said. But I might be 5'4". Because I'm getting older. I'm, I'm 51. So I don't have to be taller. I'm cool. Now I realize I'm just joy. But all I'm saying is, that's all in them 200s. That's too much for me. That's too heavy for me. So if God said, and, and so I had to fast my way out of that weight. I had to do my Daniel fast. That's how I lost over a hundred pounds in five months during the Daniel fast and just in, in fasting and praying and focusing on God and not food. So even in, in my situation now, fasting is the key. When the devil tried to tell me you got cancer, the devil, devil, you is a liar and the truth is nowhere in you. Nowhere in you. So I got to fast. I got to pray. I got to trust my God. If God say he going to heal me, he going to heal me. Now, what is my assignment in my healing process? A lot of people, God going to give me a job. God going to do this, but they, but they ain't doing nothing to obey God towards the, you know, the actions that he giving them to take, to partake in this healing process or and to partake in you coming out of poverty or to partake in you coming out of that relationship. You know, ain't nowhere in the world when a man curse you out and fight you and hit you, can slap you and beat you. Or if a woman doing that to you, ain't nowhere in the world they love you. How's somebody going to punch you in your face? I don't care if it's a woman. That's why even my sons, I don't want my sons mess with no. Listen here. I remember and I'm and I'm going to get off here. When, when I first got, when I got saved, I had been saved, I don't know how long, but I was on fire for Jesus, probably a couple of years, maybe not even the two years, I don't know how long, but I remember these people at my church, they was powerful man and woman of God, they, you know, Elder, Elder, the Davis is amazing, love our family, we love them, so they had a son that was messing with this girl, she, he was married to this woman, she had just had a baby. And so they had called me to see if I can come over to her house and do her hair. They had just got a brand new house built in Merlin Heights. 
So they wanted me to come and do her braids. And they, you know, she had mental issues, you know. But you wouldn't tell that girl had no mental issues because she didn't look like she had no mental issues. Well, I went over there and did her braids, you know. Well, him and her, they wind up separating. Oh, it's raining. It's raining. Look, y'all. See? Oh, we Jesus. Look. Yeah. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Ooh. Oh, this is my son. His food. Oh, my goodness. Lord, please protect. I, I'm so glad. Well, well, the kids are home, and my daughter, she, she at home, the one that don't live here. And my husband, I got to check on him. He called me and I was on the phone with that girl and I didn't call him back yet. I got to call my husband. And then I got to call my husband and check on him. And I covered him with the blood of Jesus that the Lord bless him to come home safe and sound. In Jesus' name. While um, I got to cut on, well, I'm cut on this back porch light. Why, um, you know, in this, in this weather, they say severe weather coverage, see? They got bad weather going on up in here. Lord, please protect us and keep us safe. But anyway, let me just hurry up and finish this video. So this woman, you wouldn't believe what happened. One day she had the girls in the car. Um, and she told she kept calling him saying she's gonna kill him. She's gonna kill them girls. So when he came over there, guess what she did with them girls in the car? She ran him over. She killed them. She in that car, she ran him over. Not only did she run him over, she backed that car and ran over him again and killed that man. And I had a dream. I didn't even know he was dead. I had a dream that he was in this parachute, like a parachute in the sky, just floating in the sky. And then that's when I got the call that he was dead and it devastated me. But that's when God started showing me I had spiritual gifts. The Lord was letting me know that man was okay, baby. He was in the, he was with the Lord. He was free. See, that's the difference being free in God than going to hell. That's a whole, whole nother thing. But anyway, so, um, so I said that to say this, I don't want my, my sons with no crazy People now listen, you can say whatever you want to say about me. I don't give a care. But I don't want my son and my sons getting abused by no women and putting up with them because they got mental issues. I'm not gonna have no son. Like I used to hit slap Greg in his face and stuff. So that boy got tired of that and just didn't knock me out. So Anyway, is that hell? Oh, that's hell. Oh, why you hear it? It's like rocks hitting the windows. Lord, please don't let it damage our house. Don't dare let it damage our cars. Oh, Jesus, please have mercy. You hear that hell? Wow. Please have mercy, Jesus. Anyway, so yeah, we don't want no demon, no, we don't want no, we don't want to be putting up with that mess. Lord, that's why I be praying, God, keep our children safe away from these relationships that's not of God. So that's it. I'm going to get off this phone and pray. I got to call and check on my husband. Let me see what time it is. He just getting off of work. Lord, please have mercy. Okay, y'all, love y'all. Cover y'all with the blood of Jesus. Keep us prayed up over here. Have have a blessed night. Jesus Christ, Lord.